first period mm -hmm. listeners and Lucas. Um, it happened at Temple. It happened at Hebrew school. <laughs> and I called my mom and she clapped on the phone and said, you're a woman now, congratulations. And Aww. then she called the cantor, uh, who's like the rabbi who sings, who is a lady. And she came into the bathroom to give me a pad. Um, oh, that's good. That's... It was very cute. But my mother was so celebratory of this occasion that she took me out to dinner to wow. celebrate the blood coming from my hoo-ha. Wow. I'm okay. Well, first off, there are a lot of worse stories that I've heard. There are a lot of worse things that could happen. That's actually like quite lovely. I, like it's funny how much of a deal she made of it, but I think that's sweet. That's really sweet. It is lovely. Although I will say it didn't teach me how to like mitigate having my period. So like my, my period war story is when mm. I went to see Mission Impossible 3 with my friend Isaac with just a, <laughs> it was just a pad liner on, which is like the tiniest little pad you can have. Okay. And I gushed blood. I was, but I was so involved because Mission Impossible 3 in case you haven't seen it, which I don't yeah. know why you would have, is so I, good. Oh, I've seen Mission Impossible 3. It's very compelling. I don't remember a single thing that happens, but it's very compelling. Yeah. I remember what, at one point that Tom Cruise, he's like, he's having like CPR done on him and then he wakes up and he, and he just like pulls out his gun. Like that's the only, and then him running and that really like weird world where his body is like perfectly aligned and hardly moves except for his arms and oh. legs chiseled it's the scientology it's what I makes know. him sexy but <laughs> afterwards i lined up to go to the bathroom like everyone else and i thought everyone was staring at me because i was in a sexy orange skirt but as it turned out everyone was staring at me because i was bleeding through my sexy orange skirt oh um, <laughs> so my, i had to go to my friend's house and go into his bathroom and hear him whisper with his dad like yeah gabrielle is her period she needs shorts. And then, of course, dads are so weird about it. So this guy was like, Gabrielle, uh, do, you, do you need anything? Do you need water, tea? Like, I don't know what he <laughs> thought I needed. I was a child. Oh, my God. That's Wait, so wait, how old were you when you saw Mission Impossible 3? I must have been like 13. Okay. I'm trying to remember what, when did that year come out? Was that like 2000? What oh. was it? goodness um I'm i have no idea i'm googling it now mission okay. impossible three uh release year was 2006 so yeah i must have been wow i was born in 1993 so that's exactly yeah. 13 that timeline checks out it'd be so crazy if i was lying could you imagine <laughs> <laughs> but mission impossible 3 came out when you were 15 gabby <laughs> fucking liar and then this becomes like a this becomes like the new cue it's just deciding like how old gabby actually was when she first bled just this becomes like the new dakota johnson lying about loving limes do you know Wait, about what? this no i don't know about this dakota johnson gave everyone gave like architectural digest a tour of her apartment and she had huge bowls of limes out and she told them i love limes i love limes so much and then it came out later that she's actually allergic to limes and she what? doesn't like them at all. It's the weirdest lie to tell. Like, isn't that fucking psycho? That's so unnecessary. What That's would so... you do that about, Lucas? What would you pretend to like that you're secretly like allergic to or dislike? Oh, um. Well, this is interesting because I remember that like one of my favorite comedians, Tom Segura, he went on Larry King, like his like his newer show that was just on YouTube. And he was asked in the moment, like um, like a food that you can't stand. And he just and he just the word oysters came to mind. So he just said that as like a thing to say. But in oh. reality, he like loves oysters. And he said it on his podcast. He was like, no, actually, <laughs> I just couldn't think of anything else to say. Um, That's different. He just froze up. Yeah, exactly. And but I'm trying to think like what because I can't think of anything in my home that I would lie about. I would just say like either this is mine or this is my parents. Like I, I'm trying to think. Podcasting. Like, anything... Yeah. You podcasting. pretend to love it and you secretly hate it. It's yeah. a necessary evil. This is the, yeah, this is the place where I sit down in front of this bitch Gabby who I love. <laughs> 
<laughs> quote unquote love. Uh, um, You're obviously a- using me for my 1 million TikTok followers. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, using same me with, for my clout. <laughs> same with Gus Constantelis. He was like, I meant this just for Gabby's audience. <laughs> oh, God. Um, wait, do you have something in your home that if you were giving a tour of your home, you would lie about it and say like, a fake backstory of why it's important to you oh i would make fake backstories about everything if if it was like architecture digest coming to my house like i would okay okay, i would lie about like my house plants i would be like like they're really just house plants i got at like a hardware store next door but i would say like this is actually the plant that jk rowling based all of her herbology (laughs) curriculum off of i got it on ebay i grew it in a little pot and who's to say that it doesn't have magic powers i would lie about a bunch i would lie about everything in my house if architecture digest came i would create a backstory on everything this these stuffed animals you know who gave me them Mm -hmm. um john cena john fucking cena gave me gave, gave me this John yeah. Cena gave me this bunny. I was just thinking, <clears throat> I was wondering if I could pretend like uh, that I have like champagne glasses or, or just like um, sort of like wider, sh- uh, shallower wine glasses and say these were actually molded after Marie Antoinette's breasts. These, these <laughs> actually were the exact same volume of her of her sacred cup size. Because I don't know if you knew, but there is like a sort of like urban legend that she had um, cups or glasses molded to perfectly align or fit around her boob that that was apparently like the design of it okay but are they like really really thin glass like did she have like super pointy boobs <laughs> like the like impossible don't... triangles <laughs> i think that they're the like if you took like a side view they would look like a parenthesis just sh- like that oh okay so she was a sexy piece yeah sexy lady it's too bad yeah. they cut her head off yeah Glad they kept the tits am i right <laughs> The important part, less less jibber jabber, more titty. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. What would you, what body part would you get a glass molded out of? Actually, don't answer that. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Unless what would you? Okay, wait, Gabby, Gabby. What would you? Li- what part of my body would you like a glass? What part made? of your body? Yeah. Mm. You know the answer. Mm. You know the answer. Say your... it for the listeners. Say it. Say it loud. Say it proud. Adam's apple. <laughs> A shot glass or just like just a full glass i just want yeah. the full adam's apple i drink out of that every day <laughs> so i always wondered what it would be like to have an adam's apple do you well you do that? have one it's it's just not prominent everyone has that it's a it's a bone and everyone has the bone it's an eve's apple for me it's an eve's apple <laughs> that's that's your gabby's apple everyone My just names gabby's apple that's <laughs> disgusting <laughs> Well, it's funny. I do remember um, when I was in college, I had a voice professor who was like trying to teach us an exercise about how to like stretch out our throats and stuff for glizzies. Um, No, but like she was like everyone, she said, everyone look at Lucas's Adam's apple, the way it moves when he does it, that's what you should all be going for. So they were all trying to like do it to like, to like to focus on like the, the movement of my Adam's apple. And I was like, this is weird. <laughs> Just Man, like everyone looking at my throat. School. Theater school is so weird. It's so weird. I remember they gave us at LaGuardia, they gave us kazoos mm-hmm. and they would like, it was uh, this one teacher who um, had clearly kind of like lost facility of his mind. He taught in like the eighties at LaGuardia, but you know, he was tenured. So I guess like I'm glad they didn't fire him, but he he literally could not. He was deaf in one ear and then blind in the opposite eye. And he kind of <laughs> knew what was going on the entire time. Like people would smoke weed in his class. His name, oh was, his name was Doc Schneider, RIP Doc Schneider. He was one of That's my That's a great name. He was one of my favorite teachers because he didn't teach us anything and he's dead now. RIP. He was a cool guy, but he gave us all kazoos and he said it would open up our throat. But then he like stopped the lesson there. He was like, here's a kazoo, play it. And so the, we just spent like an hour and a half just blowing on the kazoos. <laughs> he didn't say what it was for. It wasn't to say like the exercise, like your vocal cord. It, it, what, did he say he anything? He said it was to like 
expand our throats. But honestly, some of the girls were already doing that. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> some some of the gals were already virtue fucking osos just... <laughs> <laughs> fucking the virtue that's what they were doing fucking the virtue away wow it was a weird yeah it was a weird time and like oh my god i remember like in doc schneider's class none of us were ever paying attention to him because he couldn't control the class and this the the uh, head of the drama department walked by and like heard us all yelling and he stopped the mm -hmm. class and he told us all that we had morning detention like the entire class which i guess is normal enough apparently he didn't clear it with anyone and he brought us into school at like 7 a.m he made us sign in and then he said if you signed in five minutes late you'll have to come back again tomorrow because if you were at an audition you would not get the part if you were more than five minutes late this guy was never an actor. He'd never worked like a day in his life as an actor. Uh, I would love it if he just made up like extra rules for how EPAs uh, went. <laughs> for, for listeners who don't know, that stands for equity principle audition. So if you're auditioning for like a union play, uh, you have to go to, um, especially if you're starting out, you go to these like cattle calls and you'll be there for like five hours just waiting, hopefully that your name might get called. And <laughs> if you go to an EPA without sucking my dick, you won't yeah. get the part. <laughs> He, oh my God, he like made us sit there. He called it the breakfast club, which like clearly he'd oh never my seen God. the movie. And <laughs> I feel like I'm the only one who remembers this. Everyone blocks this out, but it's a hundred percent true. He made us sit there. He was playing the music to cabaret and none of us could speak and ask like why we were there. He would shush us every time we tried to speak. And additionally, he wasn't speaking. He put up a projector and started typing out everything he wanted to say and was like this what? is what happens when you don't listen to your teachers and then he also had headphones in while cabaret was playing and the only time he spoke in the entire class was to be like so as you might have realized I'm not really listening to music through these headphones I was trying to train <laughs> you guys and someone <laughs> said I know you were dancing to cabaret <laughs> What the fuck? This guy doesn't sound real. He's real. He got fired from LaGuardia for stealing uh, camera equipment from the school. Oh my God. And he went back to Texas to make softcore porn. Oh, this is the dude. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. oh, wait, wait, did I tell you the story about my uh, French teacher who would keep us always for detention? Did I talk about this in middle school? I, th I think so, but tell me, uh, remind me again quickly. Okay, so basically I had this French teacher in middle school. Um, her name is Miss Welch. Um, I never, I never got her first name, but she, she had this very sweet demeanor. She was always smiling. She was always just very, mm -hmm. honestly looking almost a little bit high, just in sort of like this vacant expression. But she, if she was like uh, writing something on the chalkboard, um, she would always say, class, be quiet. I can hear you talking. None of us were talking. We were all dead silent. And, um, and so very often she would just give us detention. She, Cause like, she would always hear us talking quote unquote. And but none of us would own up to it because none of us were doing it. And she was like, tell me about this. This is so funny. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I'm glad. Um, but yeah, she, so she would give us detention because she would hear us talking and then none of us would own up to it because none of us did it. And then she'd say, all right, if no one's going to own up to it, I'm going to have to give all of you detention. And we would all have to like stay inside uh, during lunch. And my middle school was that we could go out to lunch. We could go anywhere within a two block radius of our school to like restaurants and cafes to get a sandwich or whatever. Um, and so we were just prohibited from doing that. Um, and then I found out from uh, later on, kids that went to my high school who had also gone to, gone to my middle school, but were a year or two below me. Um, I was like, hey, do you guys remember Miss Welsh? And they were like, oh yeah, she's been fired. She has schizophrenia. She was hearing voices. And I was like, motherfucker. I was, there you go. Yeah. Oh my God, there was this one, oh, this one kid in my middle school class, his name was Chris. He used to like gaslight this one teacher because he'd go into the stairwell and he would like make little sounds like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> and this woman's name was Misty Giovanna and she'd go, wow, it sounds like we have a poltergeist in here. And everyone was <laughs> fucking dying because we knew it was Chris. <laughs> But we'd all be like, who is that? Yeah, it's like a ghost is haunting our class. Oh my God. Oh my God. Wait, I know I know one story of like someone messing with a teacher that is my favorite thing. There's a, a British comedian called Bob Mortimer. 
And on this TV show called What I Lied to You, he revealed that he and his friends, they got like a recording device that also could like, you could record stuff into it and then you could set it to play and it would play stuff for like hours. Um, and so what they did is they just recorded lots of random noises and then stuck it in like the ceiling. Like they removed one of the tiles, put it up in there and then placed the tile back so you couldn't see it. And so what they did, it would start it off with just like a fly, like, And then like, and then um, I just that saw- That is such a Zoom good fly, Zoom. by the way. <laughs> Thank you very much. I saw, on, I saw on Zoom a little notification. It said playing music. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so they would like, so they would, um, so these kids, they would record like a fly and then 15 and like 10 minutes would go by. Then the fly would come back and then just to like mess with the teacher. And then five minutes go by. And then the word very loudly, wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Because classically, wolves say things like "I'm a wolf." Yeah, exactly. Or, or if it's just a person who thinks that there's a wolf nearby, and that fucking broke me. It was so beautifully random. I loved it so much. I wanted to do. I wish I was in school to do that. Oh my god! Um, yeah, I never, I never like personally messed with teachers. I feel like did neither you? Did I. I was yeah. never that much of a prankster. I was asked by friends to do like prank phone calls because I could do some voices. But the mm. thing is like, I'm really bad at like keeping a straight face if I'm on a prank phone call. Cause it's just, I, I can't, I, I start smiling and laughing. I can't do it. I'm not a natural prankster. Yeah, I mean, pranks are like, how do I explain this? Like if they're fun, they're fun, yeah. right? But if they are mean spirited, like, why are we all supposed to be dicks for believing people? <laughs> you know, like, I'm a very gullible person, so I, am I will. Too. Yeah, I will just believe anything, and I don't want to lose that sense of trust in others. I don't want to go around wondering like, are they pranking me? Like, I want to have some baseline on reality. Yeah. No, right? it's, no. My my girlfriend actually recently. Um, it was for April Fools. She um. And I forgot that it was April Fool's Day. That's the thing is because I'm not a natural prankster, I don't do much for April Fool's. So I just naturally assume. You don't that celebrate? Other... No, I don't. don't I'm not cast. a practice. I'm not practicing. <laughs> Happy April Fool's to all who celebrate. <laughs> Inshallah. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, but you know, my, my girlfriend, she was like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a haircut, get some bangs and dye it all neon red. And I was like, whoa, okay. And I was, and she was, and she sent me these photos. Like, don't, don't you think I would look good with this? And I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> just, and I, I was just trying to be supportive. And inside I was like, oh my God, is she going to be like really, because it's also a very new relationship. So I was like, oh my God, is she going to be like very impulsive and just get new hairstyles all the time? And then she was like April Fool's. And I was so relieved. And she was like, did you actually believe me? I was like, yeah. She was like, you're really gullible. I was like, yeah, I am. Yeah, you are. It's but because why not? Also, what an asshole you would have been if you'd been like, well, don't fucking do that. Like, yeah, <laughs> that would be ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> with that face and that chin, you couldn't pull it off. Look at you, <laughs> just like <laughs> slow your roll, bitch. Just <laughs> <laughs> one time at a summer camp, that reminded me. I was uh, complaining. I was in a musical and I can't sing, so I was complaining okay. to this girl. I was like, I don't think. I'll be able to sing well and I'm worried I'll ruin the show and she said to me don't worry sweetie like your part's not big enough to ruin the show <laughs> it was very mean but it was a weirdly reassuring because I was like oh my she's God. right <laughs> I remember have I told you like the most original insult I've ever received no all right the most okay when I was in it was after I graduated from college but um one of my roommates had moved out early um, and another one of our friends was subletting for a month. So she was living with us and we got up one morning, we were having coffee at our dining table and she was just looking at me and she said, you know what, Lucas, you actually have a lot of classic features. And I was feeling really good about it. You myself. actually have a lot of classic features? Exact words. Um, mm. But no, there's a part too. She said, you actually have a lot of classic features. And I was like, oh, cool. I didn't say anything. But then she said, but none of them go together. Ooh, you're like Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> All the classic features are just put on each other. You should definitely say something like that to your girlfriend. I think it would go over really well. 
<laughs> sure, why not? But the thing is, like, in that moment when I was told that, I thought, that is the most original insult I've ever heard. I have never heard anything like that. And I was, I was impressed more than I was insulted. I was like, that, that's a new one. Like, you know, like Aristotle said that there are 34 storylines possible, but I, and like, I was like, God damn. Aristotle never heard that girl insult you. Never. What do you think the philosophers would be like if they were alive today? Like if they grown up, like where they would end up and what they would do, or, or do you think that like, if they, if we transported them now, what they would think of society? What are you asking? Um, I'm talking like, okay, they are, it's a little bit of both. They mm -hmm. were philosophers in an ancient life. They have all of their formed thoughts from that time period, but they came back into society today, not to be like observers of society, but to live in society. Hmm. Like they are adults living in present day, but with all their same thoughts from before. Hmm. I, I think maybe they'd be like, what's a cell phone? That would be first, but I wonder what else. I'm just wondering like how they'd react to Twitter. Like I'm, I'm immediately they wondering They would be like, canceled. They would be, yeah. I mean, philosophers could say anything they, philosopher used to be a job. Let's start yep. there. Full of, <laughs> Aristotle used to say some shit and they pay him. <laughs> he was us, but with money. <laughs> it was the oldest version of Patreon. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, hey, we're going to do something and you guys might like it. Cool. Sponsor me. Yeah. <laughs> if Aristotle were alive today, he would like tell someone I'm a philosopher and they'd be like, okay, but what do you really do? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's like, do you know anyone that actually like, just does philosophy like not a professor of philosophy but someone who just says they are a philosopher and that's their main hustle i know one i know one person who i worked with at a summer camp who said that his day job was as a philosopher but he was like wrong it was about... at a day camp let's <laughs> yeah let's start there it was actually a sleepaway camp which is even worse because that was probably his side hustle really Can, like i need that reminds me of a story did i tell you about the dude who made fun of me for um using my headphones on the subway who would make fun of someone for that okay okay so this like this guy has the same vibe of someone who would say i'm a philosopher okay so i was on i was on the subway i had my headphones in I was on the subway um, from Manhattan going back to Brooklyn and we were held at some in some tunnel before we could get to the next station and like the signs did not match actually where we were like I thought that we were already in Brooklyn but the signs still like on like next stop it said mm -hmm. Manhattan for the next stop and I was and I was confused and so I took my headphones off because we just heard an announcement but I missed it. I turned to the guy next to me. I was like, hey, those signs are wrong, like, right? We're, we're in Brooklyn now. He said, yeah. And I was like, thank you. And he said, you know, I pity your generation. I said, what? And he was, and he was like, you know, your whole generation, you have headphones in, you're glued to your phones. You could walk into traffic and, you're, and you wouldn't even notice it. Everyone is so plugged in and not like noticing the world around Classic them. Classic millennials don't even notice when they get hit by traffic. Exactly. We're just... <laughs> If I got hit by a car, I'd be like, oh, I have to tweet yeah. about it. I probably or, would. <laughs> we're all on my face and Facebook and all. The <laughs> Definitely on Facebook with Spark yeah. Spuckerberg. I feel like that's the cyber chase version of Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> cyber chase. I've been rewatching that show, but um. It's so good. But anyway, so this dude on the subway. And so he's saying all this to me. And I just thought, I'm, I just thought, all right, I'm going to try to just like de-escalate this conversation and just end it as politely as possible. I said, you know what? You're absolutely right. It's a, it's a very bad habit. It's very addictive. And we should all try more to like be unplugged and notice the world around us. Thank you. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and, and like take off my headphones and stuff. And then he said, you know, I invented headphones. <laughs> Oh, you did tell me this. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. He invented the headphone, but does he regret it? I, I don't know. If he, he just... thinks everyone is so plugged in, like, does he regret this? The weird thing as well is that he was sitting down on the subway when I got on the subway. And so I found like an empty seat next to him. And so I sat down and then he introduced me to his wife who was sat across from him. I was like, why aren't you guys sitting together? Because she's so mad at him for inventing headphones. Yeah which plugs and everyone into their little bubbles. 
I know. This is like the guy who invented the Keurig. He says every day he wishes he could take it back. It's true. That's exact. That's exactly what the guy who invented, who like bred the Labradoodle, said. He was like, "This is a monster. I should never have done this." Okay, but the Labradoodle is not as bad as the Keurig. What is that guy on about? That guy has anxiety. <laughs> He's like, "I invented this thing, and you know what? It's a little uglier than I would have liked." <laughs> bullshit who cares I was in an elevator once with my headphones on and I thought I missed my floor so I like turned to this guy I was like did I miss my floor and he was like yeah must have been some really cool song you were listening to on your headphones that made you miss your floor he was so mean and I of course never have a comeback so I responded with like actually it's a podcast which was (laughs) and it's just oh I didn't oh my god I don't have the comebacks but for some reason he didn't have the comebacks either he was like oh what are you listening to Malcolm Gladwell I said no it's not it's actually Jenna Wortham from the New York Times culture writing section I I love it if it would just become a recommendation like yeah I heard that she's good and you'll be like yeah she is pretty good you should check it out and he'll be like thanks and then I loved her take on Watchmen on HBO She put it into modern day perspective with semiotics. It was didactic. You should listen. (laughs) Bitch. And we start to tuck our dicks out and whip them around. Beat each other up. Oh, my God. Uh, Okay, wait. So so earlier, uh, uh, ladies, gents, and people who are listening and watching. So today, earlier today, uh, Gabby and I were watching just a little bit of the funeral of our darling sweet Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. And something I was wondering, this might be too soon to say, but do you think the queen has a shot for revitalizing the bachelorette? Ooh, what a question. Um, would you fuck the queen? Didn't we say we'd suck her toes? <laughs> oh, yeah, like suck the icing off her toes. <laughs> something like that. Well, here's the thing. I was, I was thinking about like, if I would, wait, would you? Fuck is too strong, but okay. Would you make love? <laughs> <laughs> I would gently caress her, <laughs> lay her in the bed. This is terrible. Lucas literally said to me over text, he was like, "I want to tweet this meme about the royal family, but I'm afraid they'll be mad if I meet them." I <laughs> yeah. Like, I I didn't want to be mean, but I was like, in what context is he gonna meet them? Like, also they'll hate you anyway. Know. You have an American accent. Yeah, no, my grand. Well, my grandfather's met the queen. Oh yeah, you did say that. Yeah, but that, he's, does he's, that mean like, is that like a Kevin Bacon thing, like two degrees of separation, or is it like you are next in line to meet the queen? No, I just thought like you know I'm super internet famous, so you know it's bound to happen. You know, it's possible. It's possible yeah. the queen is like taking TikTok stars for an open <laughs> i'm just a, oh my god open call it's you it's it's the girl who puts her um oh my god what does she do she has like the headphones and she like goes like this and she just narrates other videos um oh the asian it, girl oh and um, Lin, linda dong like yes, she starts with so. hello my friend yeah yes her 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 yes I adore she's her. gonna meet the queen i love her um I, that's i okay i was being half serious but now i'm genuinely wondering if there's like Cause they, cause like the queen will do a lineup sometimes. Like there is like a bunch of people, maybe they're in like a big famous movie franchise or they're a sports team and they'll be in a lot and the queen will go to each one and like shake their hand and say, and what do you do? And like, um, How would and I'm you wondering explain what you do to the queen. Exactly. I'm Watch wondering if TikTok. there's like, <laughs> if there's like an internet <laughs> people who are like big on TikTok that are all in a line to meet the queen. And she's like, and what do you? do and and like linda dong will be like um so there's this feature called duet and it's like (laughs) duet that's what prince philip and i did in 1847 at the grand ball is it like that will you lick my toes lucas (laughs) they're getting a little dry (laughs) oh god Oh, but, how, was oh okay. the, how was the rest of the funeral? I feel like you watched more of it than I did. I did. I, it was pretty, I don't want to say it was like boring, but I was hoping that like members <laughs> of the Royal family, well, here's the, I was hoping that like members of the Royal family would make speeches and it was pretty much just clergy. 
It was just like the Dean of Windsor Chapel or something that spoke in another dude. And then there was a choir of like five people because of social distancing. We get it. Mm. Um, and, and that was kind of it. Like there wasn't much else to it. I and was, let me I, tell you about the Dean of Windsor. Snooze mm. fest. <laughs> He's the Dean of boredom. <laughs> Am I right? The Dean of stupid. <laughs> Is it weird that I wish that I could see Trump tweet about it? Like, I kind of <laughs> wish I could see Trump's tweets about the funeral and see what he would say. I do love the punctuation idea. Prince Philip was a, uh, <laughs> what would he even say? I've lost total. He says, you know, like crooked Hillary, lying Ted Cruz. Or, dead um, Philip. Dead Philip. <laughs> <laughs> Skeletal Philip. <laughs> Afterlife Philip. <laughs> Terrible. Oh, Mummy Philip. Mummy, <laughs> mummified Philip. Because those last few photos of him alive, they looked really gnarly. He just like, his like, it looked, you know, okay, have you ever seen like revealed corpses when they're like, the skin is like very, if they still have skin and it's dried and like the skin is like <laughs> really back, so you see the teeth. He just barely had skin at the end of his life. I yeah, know he just saying. looked like, uh, he just like, he, oh, he looked bad. He looked real gnarly. I gotta say, him and the queen probably were not fucking at the end of their life so yeah. i think our mission should be first of all the queen should do a lineup but not of tiktokers of open oh. mic comedians in new york i thought you were gonna say a lineup of dudes to fuck her in succession i thought that's what you were gonna say <laughs> i was gonna well, why only dudes all the open mic comics go they tell her jokes and then they fuck her in succession <laughs> Oh, this is so oh god. Just so you and I can be there with all our friends. I mean, think about what would Chris Sure be like meeting the Queen? <laughs> oh god. Just her being like, so transitioning is pretty neat. Uh <laughs> transitioning into what? From royalty to duchess. <laughs> oh my god. Imagining yeah. Chris Sure meeting the Queen. I, I oh want my it. God. We, should, we should get her back on the podcast. I want them to be in do. a buddy cop film together. Oh, I would love. Who that else would you want a buddy cop film with the queen? I'm thinking like. Uh, Alex Kim. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That'd be good. Some some get some gay Korean drama up in there. Yeah. The queen. <laughs> Uh, in terms of celebrities maybe, i'm just imagining like, her uh, just like him like going yes i'm gay and korean and her just going i didn't know they made you <laughs> it's too bad prince philip is dead because now like who is the queen gonna like say racist things to other than everyone else in her family <laughs> oh my god yeah that's oh I, there i know that chris sure like um many a time has said that like one of the best things that like prince philip has said i'm gonna butcher this but um uh prince philip said that one time i i hate smoke alarms they kept me up one night always going off when it was broken and he said this in response to a woman who lost her child in a house fire or something like that um whoa so yeah, he was super cool. That's like losing someone to cancer and being like, oh, the fluorescent lighting in hospitals. Gosh, isn't it? They should get better light bulbs. <laughs> you know? Oh, God. They should get better. Oh, I'm I half dead. <laughs> I can see my bones through my wafer thin skin. <laughs> My wafer. Did you ever watch uh, that Monty Python sketch? Yes. My mom. Oh my god. Whoa, oh yeah, Mr. Chris. Oh, With a little, is a little wafer thin mint. I can't eat it. I'm absolutely stuffed. <laughs> My mom used to clown on me with that sketch all the time because when I was a little kid, I would just eat and eat. I don't know how I stayed. When I was little, yeah, I was up until I was like eighteen. I was actually like a bean pole, mm -hmm. but I could eat. I could put down so much food, and my mother would clown on me. She'd be like, "You're gonna explode like that wafer thin mint guy." <laughs> Wait, can I ask? Like, were you a picky eater at all? No. That's that's fascinating because like I was the pickiest eater up really? until I was up until around like age 12. Um, what and that's opened up I, your world? Uh, onions. Just like apples? Just just no, 
chomp no, it on like, him. No, just that's when I got interested in cooking, just with like frying onions, and I oh, love the yeah. smell of it and eating. I was, and then like I explored with, like adding garlic to it, and then mm. just like my diet ex- of like. And before then, my mom said you ate five things, and like ketchup was one of them. Ketchup that's what she by itself. Yeah. Um, no, but yeah, I was I was a very picky eater, and that's why I remember I asked my mom once. I was like, "Were you ever afraid that I was going to gain weight as a kid?" She was like, "You never ate anything." <laughs> Learning to cook is so fun. I think 12 is kind of like on the younger side to learn. I was old when I When did you start cook. like cooking or getting interested in cooking? I was interested in cooking in college. Before that, I didn't okay. even know how to salt pasta or do any of that stuff. But then in college, I started just reading all these recipes and going to the grocery store and like taking up all the space in our shared kitchen. And now I'm really into cooking. I cook almost every day if I can. Um, Oh, that's good. And I find it like so fun and so creative. But back in the day, man, I didn't I I used to put the pasta in the water like before the water was boiled. Uh, I mean, that's, a, that's, a, that's an honest mistake. That is an like if you're not like if you're just like going off of like if you're just sort of winging it and you don't really know what you do. I can understand like that. If you've mind. never seen a cooking show in your life. Yeah, that's yeah. what you do. And then you see Alex Cornicelli yell at someone for putting the pasta in wrong and you're like okay well Wait, who mom, is that alex horner shelly what alex horner shelly is just like the ultimate mommy on chopped she's a judge okay she, she runs the restaurant butter in new york and she is just the most no nonsense like adorable woman she'll t- she'll say things to people like uh your radishes were very well intentioned <laughs> I'm like bitch i love you that that's a beautiful phrase. She once said mayonnaise can be a powerful force in the universe. Whoa. So true, Queen. So true. <laughs> How could I disagree? I want her to, did you see like that book of um, a RuPaul? It's, it's a book that RuPaul published of like just him in drag in various poses and outfits. And then it's just a single inspirational quote next to it. And that's each page. Like it's a total money grab all of Ru- i've been watching so much rupaul lately it's yeah. all i really believe he's a sociopath it's all a money grab oh yeah it's an amazing show and i appreciate the way he's opened up the drag world for a lot mm-hmm. of people um but i think it's pretty psychotic to make the drag queens like go out on the runway to rupaul's music and then at the end they all have to dance to rupaul's music yeah it feels like America's Next Top Model, like not only in the sense that RuPaul looks like Tyra's Sim, but also like <laughs> <laughs> in the oh sense that God. like they all like when Tyra Banks would come onto the screen, they would have to, or like come into the room, all the models would have to scream. Like they would have to like applaud for her, like the producers instructed them to do that. So all of these shows are just huge money grabs for the host. Wow. I had no idea. I just know that, I just know that, that uh, I was about to say Tyra Banks. I just know <laughs> that RuPaul is like, I've only learned recently, apparently very anti-trans and like, or at least there's a lot of like, um, back and forth about like how she treats trans people on the show. Yeah. I don't know if it's that she's anti-trans. It's that like, I, she's made a lot of enemies on the, Aaron told me about all this she's made enemies on the show because they like kind of spoke out about how like you know there's like a lot of like transphobic terminology in early seasons of RuPaul's Drag Race like they used to say like you've got she male when they oh. say you got male which is like you know an outdated term of course but the problem is instead of like owning up and apologizing, she'll like make enemies of the people on the show who speak out afterwards being like, like, like Rue has never apologized. I feel like about any of it really. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, mm. except putting up the trains flag on Twitter when she meant the trans flag, <laughs> which we spoke about in an earlier episode, but it's so funny still. It's so oh, funny. Oh, wow. The fucking train. I, I support trains no matter what. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Trains were really an underrated form of travel. <laughs> Everyone's so into planes nowadays. Yes. No the little en- the little envy that could. <laughs> yeah, RuPaul's drag, it's just melting my brain, Luca. It is yeah. melting my brain in quarantine. I like 
I could diagnose all those queens except like two of them with like four mental illnesses all on the spot mm-hmm. and it's not because they're drag queens it's because they are on that show ah uh, wait wait, uh, wait do you know what like the submission process for it is like how if wait what is it t- what sort of mental issues does it take to have well, I don't, I don't like... know that they have to type in like a narcissist, but I mean, it's just very clear that they go into these rooms where they do like the untucked, which is um, where they basically like talk about the show and air out all their drama, the Queens. And it's like they're cosplaying. Like there are these, they're like so mean and catty to each other about, mm. and I have to th- I have to speculate that I feel like a lot of the queens have like really gone through some shit in their lives. So instead of all like supporting each other and being very congenial, they're just uh, trained to speak from a lens of like defensiveness. But uh, uh. like half of it, half the time is like they, they, if one of them is insecure about something, like if one of them comes from the pageant world and there's a comedy challenge they're not naturally good at, they'll make it like a moral thing and be like, I don't think drag should be so funny because it's not a joke to me, it's real. Um, Or they'll get upset about like something the judges say and then another queen will be like, well, girl, it's a competition. And they get into fights with each other that way. Mm. And it's so strange because like, it is just a competition, none of it's personal. And I'm sure they realize it after the show, but in the bubble that they put them in, this mm-hmm. producer manipulated, no cell phones, no outside interaction bubble. Yeah. That's the only way they can think. I see. Well, the thing is, I was interested if like, if, if like the sort of cattiness or like that sort of aggression is organic or something that's like edited to produce. Because I know, or well, maybe not edited, but it's something like on the more managerial production side. Because I know, I was listening to a podcast recently where Sam Marill, a fantastic comedian. Love uh, him. He, yeah. I adore him. And I remember him talking about his experience on America's Got Talent, that he was always being prodded for like, you know, a bit of like a sob story or something to like add to his like bio or like the the sort of like little cutscenes between them doing their acts and stuff. Um, And also, I think that the America's Got Talent, when he went to LA or like the semifinals or something, he was put in a hotel room next to a construction site. And I think he said, I could be, I could be like misquoting, but I'm pretty sure he said that he was pretty sure that it was designed so that he would have as little chance of possible of getting a good night's sleep. So he would be more irritable and reactive the next day when shooting yes. to like create more, more drama. So that's sort of what I was thinking in terms of like RuPaul's Drag Race of like, oh, how much of it is organic of the queens or is it sort of like edited or like it's it's like on. that it's like what happened to sam Marill. they put them yeah. all in hotels and they're by themselves they don't have any outside interaction um and they're not allowed to talk to each other unless they're filming so it's like all the drama like has to happen on camera yeah and i think that's part like of this for podcast the we, we don't talk otherwise we just we <laughs> save it all for this whenever we say here's a funny photo no save it for the podcast i don't want to fucking hear it lucas i block his number unless we're recording it's true right (laughs) they do it on all these shows though it's crazy like oh yeah on uh there was a show i used to love called are you the one but i've sworn off of it because a bunch of contestants have come out and said that the producer team really mistreated them and that they've been like in therapy for it now for Whoa. years because of the ways that they were like they there were there were definitely scenes where they were like not allowed to talk to each other for hours on end while they were, mm-hmm. f- they were filming there were scenes where like people's meds were like mixed up so that <gasps> they would act differently like really crazy stuff like that oh that oh that's diabolical mm-hmm. that's oof Uh, Oh my, wait, did you also, this is like a bit of a different angle, but like, did you ever see the movie Hereditary horror movie? I didn't, but I am such a Tony Collette fan. I need, I know I need to see it. Yeah, I am, I'm not a horror movie fan. I make a few exceptions, but that, and, but I'd never want to see that. But I did hear that I think that at least one actor from that movie had to see therapy because the making of the movie was so traumatic. Whoa. about just the content of the movie and it was just so scary that he had to he had to get a therapist for it well that shit's your i mean that happened to shelly poor shelly duvall 
she was like oh really i mean she was definitely like mistreated on what movie was it it might have been like the shining or something where she was just completely like um she was just horrified the whole time (laughs) like there were all these little unexpected twists and turns and that's why she didn't have like a huge career after and just started doing the hi i'm shelly duvall wow i didn't know that oh my goodness i also know that um jack nicholson like he really like destroyed that they had to like i think they had to like reinforce the first door because they thought they were like, yeah, let Jack Nicholson like uh, axe down the door and see it. Let's see how far he gets. And he just destroyed it. They were like, oh, we need to like build up the door more. Oh my God. <laughs> we need to like make a stronger door because he's just an animal. Entertainment, man. Oh yeah. It's a, it's a tough industry. You know, for this podcast, we have to do a little bit of psychological torture as well. Yeah. I make I Lucas don't... pretend to like me for an hour and 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And I confiscate Gabby's phone for most of the week. <laughs> I can't even play my fantasy baseball. <laughs> what gives? <laughs> do you play fantasy baseball? I do. It's the worst thing about me. It's the most toxic thing how, about me. How have I not heard this about? How have you not talked about? I, in the closet about because it's a secret. <laughs> Are you a closeted straight dude in his mom's basement? <laughs> I this is my mom's basement right now. Yeah, I'm the bed not made. <laughs> very straight behavior <laughs> yeah i love fantasy baseball i am in a group chat with um like 10 guys in their 40s um i got into this fantasy league because my ex's boss invited me in and then my ex and i broke up but i still played in the fantasy league because i was i was really good i have no words this <laughs> And I was worried. I was worried getting in because the the guy who like brought me into the league, he he like made me worry. He was like, oh, you know, the guys all talk trash. Like, and I was like, oh my God, what misogynistic things do they probably say in this chat? And then the first chat, like with someone being like, uh, you'll never beat the champ. And then someone else <laughs> went, you mean the chump? <laughs> I was like, oh, it's going to be fine. <laughs> It's just all really like juvenile and just second grader. Like, yeah, well, you can't have cookies if I win. Just like, yeah, it's like, uh, and so they they use a lot of like uh, cry laughing emojis. You know oh. how we were talking about it with Sh- yeah. Charlotte. Like, did they do the do tilted the, one? The tilt, yes, the tilted one. They oh, they them. use like the most interesting man in the world gifts. Like this, <laughs> I mean, have you seen this in Zoe? I don't think so. <laughs> I haven't seen anyone use that in ages. I don't know ever. Oh, amazingly, I'm the wittiest person in this chat. My my jokes land every single time. <laughs> nice. Oh my god. If do you think if you do you think if you ever do like stand up? Wait, have they ever seen your face? No, they know I'm female, and that's all they know. Oh my. I'm wondering if the, if if it like it would be such a total catfish situation if you ever like met up in person and they were just like, "Wait, where are you?" Oh, Jesus. And <laughs> that would be so funny. I've actually like thought for a while. I was like, I should host them at my house and like make them dinner or something, but I don't want to fall into these crazy traditional roles and then have to like explain to them that I'm still going to beat their asses at this game like I I, just I would feel so girl boss doing that I I want you to be one of those dudes who's 50 in like a bowling shirt playing poker (laughs) with these guys these guys you know I will be honest I love bowler aesthetic I love bowling shirts I love bowling shoes I don't know what bowling pants are but I probably love them too I think this, I think this is your stand-up outfit. This is what you need to wear for your special. <laughs> In however many years, 20 years yeah. or something. Yeah, they'll, all the guys in the alley. fantasy league will be dead by then, but I'll, I'll honor them. <laughs> yeah. Oh. In my special. Isn't that sad? Isn't it sad you like watch a movie or something with a dog in it or something? You're like, that dog definitely. Just dead. Yeah. Oh, I haven't. I do think about that sometimes. I remember like thinking about like, because I saw like one of the oldest ever photographs of a pit bull that was like guarding a baby really, really sweetly. And I just saw, oh, that pit bull's so dead now. So not only dead, but like so, Prince Philip dead. <laughs> of all, uh, on one to dead, this dog is Prince Philip. <laughs> Prince Philip levels of dead. Oh God. Uh, I'm trying to find another good like uh, microcosm of the fantasy conversations. 
there's so one sweet. there's one guy he always types like when instead of like lol or something mm -hmm. he types ha in all caps with three exclamation points whenever i oh, get the good. ha i know I've, I've made a good show that's adorable that's so cute <laughs> wait are these the guys that also like sign off saying dash reg or something like instead instead of like they, they don't realize that their name is like above the actual message or something and so they sign it they're not they're not that old they're not like okay. my mom texting me like love you mom exactly that's <laughs> my mom as well yeah. oh really oh that's talk, really cute talk soon xoxo mom like what if you were just like wait who's this how'd you get this number <laughs> thank god you signed off otherwise i wouldn't i wouldn't yeah i want to start texting like that now Next time yeah. Sylvie texts me like, babe, do we have oatmeal? I'm going to be like, don't know. Love, Gabby. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was thinking recently, I'm trying to do this as a bit, actually, of um, because I have you been getting like political um, reach her out texts oh like, hey, donate to this campaign, would you? Mitch McConnell mayor? is screaming for you to ignore this email. <laughs> Oh, that's so good. But yeah, I've been getting them recently and it would see, say something like, hey, it's John from the Andrew Yang campaign, running for mayor, love you to sign, uh, like donate five bucks. And I thought, it's so weird that that's how they introduce themselves. They say, hey, it's, and then they say their name instead of, instead of going, hi, my name is. And I was thinking like, they text as if they met you at a party and that you exchange numbers, but they're not confident that you put their number in your phone. Like, hey. It's John. all way too overly personal. You're yeah. so right. But also a little bit like, it's all a little, it's a little gay, you know? Like it's a little like, <laughs> they're like McConnell's meltdown. <laughs> <laughs> Twinks are so much drama. <laughs> oh, wait, I love the idea that, politi that political strategists are like, we need to get into gay Twitter. We need them to work for us. <laughs> Honey, the skinny tea on Andrew Yang is. <laughs> oh my God. There is um, Beto O'Rourke. Please le read. Don't delete. <laughs> These are, they're pathetic. Yeah. I, I also, like when they say, hey, it's John, I almost want to go, oh, sorry. I thought this was Annie from Hinge because of the way they introduce themselves, I'll be like, oh, sorry, I had you under my phone under a different name. Like that's New where phone, my impulse goes. Who dis? New phone, who dis, yeah. Sometimes people respond to like, if like Verizon reaches out to you, like your bill is due, sometimes people re will respond. And then it turns out it is actually another person on the other end of the phone. And they'll oh. say things like, fuck you broke bitch. I'm sure they get fired <laughs> after, but it's pretty funny. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I try to, I remember when I would get like calls, sometimes I would be, they would say, hey, I just want to ask if you have a moment to talk about uh, the campaign or something. And I would just, I would try to play therapist and I'll be like, if I said no, how would you feel about that? I'm just Ooh. Like, what if they started crying? They were like, well, don't, <laughs> don't say no. Yeah. I remember once I was phone banking for Bernie Sanders and um, I got until I stayed on a call for like an hour with a woman in Chicago, oh. just talking about Bernie Sanders versus Joe Biden. She was like, yeah, I just think that Joe Biden has a better chance of winning. And I was like, yeah, but if but it's only the it's, it's only the primaries. So if, so if Joe Biden has every chance of winning, but you align more with Bernie Sanders, vote for him now. And then if because I'll vote for Biden later. And I, we got into a very deep conversation and she was like, you're a very lovely person. And I wish you, I wish your campaign well as I, I wish you, it was like very sweet. Did you convince, you couldn't convince her in the I end, didn't, right? I didn't convince yeah. her. But you did ask her out. I did. And we are, we are now expecting. Um. <laughs> hey, and speaking hey. of expecting, oh. I am expecting some fun listener submissions today. Oh, shit. Um, first, I have to break my streak, Lucas, and I do have okay. to pee in the middle of the podcast again. Okie dokie. But I will be right back. I'm back in the game, bitches. You can't stop me. You can't stop me. All right, listeners, thank you for writing in. You you guys have written in some great ones, and we really appreciate you continuing to listen. And to write you guys in. have been killing it on the submissions. We love these so much. There's so much tea. Let's let's dive right in. Okay, I have I have one pulled up. Okay. Here we are. Advice needed. Should I break up with my boyfriend or marry him? Strong start. <laughs> Strong fucking start. I love this. Okay. Woo! So I have been in this dilemma for about a year now. 
I have been dating my boyfriend for four years. He is Canadian and I am American. We have a cute love story where we met in Japan. Good times, haha. He moved to California so that we could have a more serious relationship. And we are totally in love. Here's the twist. He wants to settle down in Canada. If I said yes tomorrow, he'd pick me up and bring me to Canada in a heartbeat to live our lives together. Part of that sounds exciting to me, and yet I can't imagine settling down so far away from my family, especially with us wanting kids. I feel guilty and also not sure if I'd like it. Plus, Canada is so cold. I love the beach and the sun. It's been stressful, and with the pandemic, I haven't been able to uh, try par- Sorry. Uh, tripoppers. Tripoppers. <laughs> I, um, it's been stressful. And with the pandemic, I haven't been able to try properly living in Canada yet and not sure how feasible that would be with my job. Not to mention, I'm in my late 20s and kind of hoping to settle down sooner rather than later. But we're in such, but we're such a good match for each other. Please send help. This is tough. Mm. I mean, you got to ask him like, I mean, location, like where you want to live on just for throughout the year that's a big thing to think about and if you really want to live in one kind of environment one kind of zone and it doesn't match with his you got to talk about that um but but think about this you also get health care and you say you want kids do you want your kids to have health care like just guaranteed think about this poutine delicious mm. really good yeah um, bagged milk as well no cartons bagged yeah. milk i saw this thing as a yeah they don't like get it in like a like a cardboard carton they get it in a bag and then they put it in a jug and then they cut off a bit of the bag and then they pour it out of the jug into their cereal or whatever that's the thing they do okay maybe she shouldn't marry him <laughs> no i'm kidding i mean look break up with your boyfriend or marry him i mean why not both why not both why such fine <laughs> thinking uh, Porque no los dos. Porque yeah. no los dos. I'm done. I, okay, I'm done fucking around. I think, yeah, where you want to live, crucial. Yeah. I remember, my ex was desperate to live in the Pacific Northwest, and I hate rain, love sunshine, hate Seattle. Um, <laughs> and you hate everyone in Seattle. You hate the weather. You hate the rain. You have <laughs> everything about it. I hate the baseball it. team. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, I think giving Canada a trial run is a nice idea. I mean, yes, you are in a pandemic, but, um, yeah, just you, not any, not any, <laughs> we're all out of the pandemic, but you, yeah. you're still in it. And, uh, you know, agreeing to marry someone and then move where they, where they want to live is probably not conducive to a healthy relationship, but if he's yeah. absolutely desperate to live in Canada, maybe that's something you can consider with your job, trying to like move it to be remote or- She said, but she said that, she didn't say what she did for a job, but she said that would be difficult. Mm. So it might be something that needs to be like live in person in America. Like it's, it's that kind of a deal, whatever her job is. So- yeah, it's this hard. We've got missing pieces. It's like, do you love your job? Because if you love your job, you yeah, exactly. Say, do you hate your job? Because if you hate your yeah. job, you definitely do. You even love your boyfriend that much? Just like, <laughs> do you want to break up with him or marry him? Yeah. <laughs> One or the other. I think that this brings up another point, which is that you, these are the these are the sort of confirm the confirmations conversations you should be having if you're thinking of getting serious with someone. Think about these. Uh, think about the stuff that's important down the road. Like, mm -hmm. do you want to have kids? Where do you see yourself living? Where what? Where do you see yourself um, doing and living and stuff in years to come? These are all conversations that you should have early on, and that will save you a lot of uh, a lot of hurt or a lot of consideration. Yeah, unfortunately, relationships are one of those things we all talk about it as if it's like just a love connection but it's uh if you're talking about marriage it's a practical connection oh 100 uh, so it's like if there's something in the way you want to live your life that doesn't mm -hmm. align that doesn't make your partner a teammate but makes them an obstacle yeah. you probably don't want to marry them yeah i was actually listening to um uh, a podcast where someone wrote in where he, um she was talking about how she's either about to get married or she is married and her husband is like the fourth, uh, like his name, like his dad is the same name as grandfather is it's, it's a long line of dudes naming their son, the same name. And he wants to name their future son, 
the same thing the fifth. but it's yeah the fifth and but the thing is like it's not a good name and she really doesn't want her what to is it, name like her Eugene? child something like that or <laughs> osbert or something <laughs> um name a something kid, like osbert. that yeah osbert no. the fifth osbert the fifth that sounds that's a name that fo- that sounds like it belongs with the fourth or fifth like that Oz- but um oh uh, yeah you'd always you just shorten it to ozzy it'd be yeah. fine but yeah, that's but, wildly impractical. Naming yeah. your kid the same thing. Ugh. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. Yeah, I think for this person, it's like a. Uh, I think you got to negotiate with yourself what your priorities are. You got to negotiate yeah. with your boyfriend what his priorities are. Yeah. Um, and also, you got to reevaluate this thing where you think you're like an old crone or an old maid who needs to settle down right away. I mean, goodness, in your 20s, uh, no one needs to settle down in their 20s. Arguably, no one needs to settle down ever. It's just settling down is something that's a nice option when you want to. Trevor Noah said it, but I, and just a little clip from his interview on Howard Stern, he says, I don't believe this notion that every single person is designed for the exact same kind of life. And I thought that was so perfectly Mm. said. He's just like, ever, like, people are so different and people can live in different ways. There's so many different ways to live that should not be judged Mm -hmm. or, uh, and that you shouldn't judge yourself for if, if you want something different or you want to live in a certain way. Um, Yeah. So think about your priorities, have a full, honest, upfront conversation and try not to judge yourself or him or anybody else for what you want. Absolutely. I love that. And here's another one that, um, we're also not going to judge anyone for, but okay. Someone just wrote furries. Go find out what the fandom is really about. Don't just Google it. <laughs> Go to a library. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, what? like you're in high school and they're like, no, no, no. You can't look this up on the internet. You got to go to the library. You got to rent a book and you got to, you got to suffer like I suffered. Is she talking field research? <laughs> so let me tell you something. I think furries might, like, you know, Lucas and I are both vaccinated. Things are pretty yeah. safe. I still am not going to a furry convention. They probably invented the coronavirus there. Or maybe this person is saying, don't use Google, use Bing. <laughs> if I looked, let me look on Safari then. <laughs> or wait, no, that's not a search engine. That's a that's browser. A browser. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> oh God. What what could this possibly mean? Did we talk about furries in a previous episode? Probably. Furries are always on my mind. Yeah. I'm always thinking about I was busy thinking about furries. You know that song? I was no. busy thinking about boys. Boys. Oh. Furries. <laughs> I was actually, I was, for some reason, I was talking about furries with my girlfriend and she said, I don't know if you know this, but there are also scalies, people who like to dress up as like, as snakes, as lizards. I was like, you don't need to name animals. It's very clear. <laughs> like she started naming like a lot of scaled animals. I was like, it's pretty self-explanatory. Do you think they have a war? The furries versus the scalies? I think it's a Capulets versus Montague situation. And that there will one day be a furry and a scaly that fall in love, star-crossed lovers, and they they die for each other. And in a way that brings an end to the feud between these two great houses. You know what? I am going to ignore this listener's advice not to Google it. And I'm going to Google if there's a furry convention. Oh, there 100% is. There has to be. In New York City coming up soon. Uh, Oh there was a Oh my God, there was a furry cruise which sounds like Surrey Cruise <laughs> in 2019, before the pandy. Um, it sounds like a 90s comedy. Furry Cruise. <laughs> like, oh my God. Adam Sandler and Rob Schneider. Like, it sounds like that. Uh, oh my God, you're right. Wait, but there's a website, nycfurs.com. It's the New York City furry community. And they're like banner says forget about it <gasps> oh. oh my oh god my nyc god. furries is home to the first authentic furry convention in nyc finding other furs in the big apple can be hard which is why it's our goal to make it easy 
Yeah, Jesus. you know what? That's weirdly beautiful. This site is proud to offer integrated social connections. You can interact with your fellow peers. Be sure to keep track of events we host or even host your own. Lucas, should we host a furry convention? Oh my god. Well, that that'll get messy. I don't want to I don't want to deal with like <laughs> fake tiger hair all over my place, you know? I thought you were going to say I don't want to deal with fake furries, which me too. These fake bitches. Well, like us cuz we're uh, cuz uh, to my knowledge you're not a furry either. To um, your knowledge. To my knowledge. But it, I'm just wondering if it's a bunch of other people just in furry suits just being like, "Lol, this is so ironic." Like yeah, and it's just I, all not real furries and we're all just like oh this is disappointing no i think anyone who would call themselves a furry that's not something you get clout for no to be a fake furry you'd have to be in, you'd have to be genuinely insane <laughs> to be like this is the club i want to belong to this yeah. is there's no way no one would do that if you're a fake furry listeners i want you to type in the chat why you've mm. chosen this path in life. And if you're a real furry, I also want to know why. It's interesting. I know a comedian who uh, she, at one point she like moved to New York, but she originally lived somewhere else where she was doing comedy. And they had a full kink based open mic where everyone could dress up or like do something that was like related to their kink. And there was someone who like dressed up in like a baby diaper. Um, and like, and every, but everyone was like cheering this dude on and they were all dressed in weird shit. And I'm sure there were furries. And I was thinking, what if there was like a furry open mic? Lucas, my kink is vanilla sex. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> my kink is natural, easy, my non-furry. Kink is just, my kink is just connecting conversation. Just a good, just a- <laughs> My kink is looking deep into your eyes. <laughs> My kink is a shared blanket in a nature documentary. It's just... You know what? That is my kink. God, that is so, the wholesome open mic. You're only allowed open. to go if your kink is like baking apple pie. <laughs> like the 50s without the racism. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Next right. submission. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Here's one. What do you do when your significant other is still in the honeymoon phase and you're not? Like they're wanting to be together 24 seven, constantly missing you, even if you're gone for like 10 minutes and you're not like, and you're not like you're relaxed and don't particularly care whether they text back in less than five minutes and you're okay with space. Does that mean you're falling out of love though? Ooh, I think it depends. I think it could mean you're falling out of love or it could mean that you just don't want to be texted every five minutes. I think that it all depends. Like, I think ultimately you just have to have, have a brave up and have a conversation with that person being like, Hey, I really care about you, but I'm, but I worry that I'm not in the same place you are. And that might be uncomfortable for you. Like, mm. do you want me to be as intense with, you as I believe you're intense with me like that's just something you that's something you need to talk about because I've definitely I've dealt with that in the past where because mm -hmm. like I'm someone like I I love and need my own personal space like I I enjoy like being quiet in the morning and evening I like taking walks I like enjoying the quiet and I also I'm a, I'm a bit like this person like I don't personally care if like a person doesn't my significant other responds like super immediately um mm -hmm. and if they don't respond immediately i'm just like my if my girlfriend doesn't respond to me immediately i'm just like oh she's probably doing something it's all good she'll respond to me later though like I'm just, I'm just very, yeah and um and i think i think that's a very healthy state of state to be in where you care about the person but you're not obsessed with like you you care you do other things that occupies your mind like i think that's a very healthy balance and i was actually i was actually talking about it with a friend of mine who said that he in the past, like he has like been like obsessed with someone like when they want or like he wanted to be with um, her like every single day of the week. And I told him like how I typically am in relationships. Mm -hmm. He was like, no, that's way healthier. That's what you should be like. Yeah. And so I think if you're uncomfortable with a person like texting all the time, wanting you to respond, like it's um, then you then if you're uncomfortable, that's totally valid for you to talk about. And I don't think unhealthy. What do you think, Abby? I agree. I've even had friendships like that where another person has texted me like all the time constantly and I haven't like texted back because I was doing something else 
and the person would be like, oh my god, I'm sorry, I must have said something wrong because you didn't respond. And I was like, no, the thing you said was fine. I was just in the fucking shower. Not that yeah. I haven't texted in the shower before because I do sometimes do that. Right. But I will say my mother always says it's, it should be like a Venn diagram. So it's like you're the two people and then you have your intersected lives and then you also have your separate lives and it all goes together. That's and really good. And I, I like that a lot. I'm inclined to agree. I also think that the person on the other end, your SO should like analyze, and this is very hard for people to do. And I understand why they are so immediately obsessive because I have been the person someone is obsessed with. And I've also been the obsessive person. And I think there's an, Likewise. Ex- I think there's an extent to which um, you can be uh, projecting like uh or like uh projecting an an idea onto someone that they are like this the solution to all of your problems and maybe and that's an uncomfortable situation for someone to be in because no one should have that position thrust upon them no one should yeah no one is a cure-all no one is anyone else's i think the worst experience i had with that was when i i went on one date with someone and we like hooked up and i was pretty clear i was like i don't really know what i want and then she started tagging me in BuzzFeed articles on Facebook. Like mm. 10 signs you eat more food than the average person. You know, shit like that. And she'd be like, Gabby, don't you relate? And I was like, we, yeah. went, out, we, we went out once. <laughs> so I had to make up this lie that like I ran into my ex or something and that we were going to get back together. Because at the time I wasn't comfortable just being like, I'm not interested. Um, which is probably what I should have done. But, you know, it was a weird thing because I was like, we went out once. We didn't, to my knowledge, we didn't connect that much. Like, you just want a relationship. You just want someone to send BuzzFeed articles to. So you skip to that yeah. part. It's, it's so easy for like two people to have wildly different interpretations of how things went. It's so it, like just about like, oh my God, we connected so much. And the other person is like, I mean, it was all right. That's like what the Undateables is in Time Magazine. Oh, you know about this? They like th- get the two people together and they write a column about how they both think the date went. Oh, <laughs> oh, I have, uh, I, cause in the UK there is, um, I think a show called the Undateables and it's about like people with like different disabilities who like find dating difficult and like oh, uh, facilitating cute. like them, uh, finding dates. Um, yeah. I love that. That's I love great. it too. But yeah, so I, so first off, so this person who wrote in, please do not judge yourself for um, being more distant or just being more relaxed in terms of how you think about your significant other. Um, and then if it, if it bothers you the way that person is like very intense, you have to express it because mm-hmm. like a relationship should be like a relationship ideally should be where you don't feel like you have to put on any front. You can just be yourself. And so if you feel like you're not able to be yourself, you need to talk about it until you can. Um, yeah. Also, or it one might last, not be a good match, but yeah. One last thing to add is that if you're asking yourself, if you're falling out of love with someone, you probably know the answer. Yeah. You know, I don't ask myself if I'm hungry 40 times a day because I'm not hungry. Actually, that's probably not a good analogy because physically I'm probably not hungry, but emotionally <laughs> I'm always hungry. Well, that's an interesting thing because isn't that like a whole like, not a subreddit or just like a thing of like, am I, am I tired or am I hungry? So that's like, those are two things that can be confused Ooh. for each other a lot. I've heard it as if you think everybody's mad at you, you're tired. If you're mad at everyone, you're hungry. Whoa. That's Mind blown. super interesting. Yeah. There's, well, there's also a, cor- a corollary, a corollary of, uh, are you, are you into this person or are you just horny? Ooh, the aorta of the situation. Mm. It's the mitochondria. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the powerhouse of the relation. Oh, God. Um, okay, here's another. Uh, someone yeah. said, I'm terrified of pigeons. If I see one on the sidewalk, I change my way immediately. <laughs> I live just one hour from Venice and I haven't been there in years because of pigeons. I honestly get hysterical when I see them and I can't figure out why. As a child, I wasn't afraid of them. Now I could be late, quite late to no matter how important appointment because a pigeon was in my way. So I took the long road. Is there someone like me? Hmm. 
This is interesting because I really want to figure out what the pinpoint was. Like, what was the point of change where you weren't afraid of pigeons or, and then you did like, there has to be a traumatic event, or maybe you saw like something passing on the TV about how gross pigeons were that they carry disease or something like there has to be something that's stuck in your mind and, and changed. And I really want to know. Pigeons are a little gross. Oh, they're disgusting. I'll be the first to admit it. They're rats of the sky. Yeah. Yeah. So I get the fear. Um, Anything that makes you late to work is probably, other than like stopping at Starbucks to get a coffee, is probably detrimental to your, so I don't, but I don't know what immersion therapy a person could use to, to stop being afraid of pigeons. Hmm. Just like bathing in like, just, I I mean, just bathing. I was thinking bathing in Times Square. I don't know what that means. Bring the inflatable pool. (laughs) Put it in front of the Olive Garden. Bring bird feed and just let them go to town on you. Don't bring bird feed. Order the tour of Italy and put it out. (laughs) Have you ever had the tour of Italy at Olive Garden? No. Oh, I've never been to Olive Garden. Oh, Lucas, we got to go to Olive Garden. We got to go to the one in Times Square. (laughs) Let's go to the Times Square Olive Garden. I'm not, I'm so hungry. I'm not kidding. I would go right now. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. But yeah, um, uh, all right, let's do, let's do another one. Um, where is it? Okay, here we go. Um, oh, this is good. And this, this is, I chose because it, it fed into something that I actually have thought in the past. So this is what this person said. So I have a weird fear of old people. It might be due to the fact that when I was really young, my Girl Scout troop would go to the local nursing home and help older folks do small crafts and such. And anytime I was there, I would just notice all the small things they struggled with, uh, the things they struggled with, um, which I at that age couldn't process well. I would try to help them with whatever thing it was we were crafting, but with like communication levels, being a child and an unstable, usually forgetful mind, I just couldn't talk to them well. And they always creeped me out. Also one guy who was on the younger side of old was missing a hand, but still played the piano every time. And I was a piano player. So I was also, so that also weirded me out. Nowadays, Ah. nowadays, this is a long one. Nowadays, I still feel weird when near really old people. Like I went to visit my grandma for Christmas in the nursing home she was in, and she had several memory problems. And at that point, and she had several memory problems at that point. And I just kind of stood awkwardly by the TV. And while I kind of shook her hand as I left, my siblings gave her hugs and such. She then died in February. And I'm pretty sure the last time I saw her was that Christmas. So now I feel bad. Uh, for now saying goodbye better, for not saying goodbye better, but my fear just got in the way. And so I think it's a problem now. Also, my church is mostly older people. And since I'm the pastor's daughter, they all know who I am and come over and talk to me when I don't know who they are. And I never know what to say to them. So I try to find an excuse to get away, which I feel horrible for doing, but I just can't be near them. Anyways, that's my phobia that probably needs counseling or something for enjoy. Or two random comedians from a podcast. That's also a form the, of ca- counseling. I The thing is, I completely understand her. I can totally see myself like in her shoes, mm-hmm. having all of the experiences she had and having an aversion to old people. That makes complete sense to me. Yeah. It's unfortunate because it's, I, I don't think she means to offend anyone old. I don't think fear. so. Yeah. So I, yeah. I, I, I get it. And I wouldn't say I like sympathize because I haven't been in that uh, highly specific situation. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I, I definitely feel like, uh, uh, yeah, I, I can, I can understand. It's, um, yeah. I, I'm not going to sit here and cancel this person. No, not at all. But the reason why I was so attracted to this submission was because I also, as a kid, I really didn't like being around old people, certain old people, like my mom's parents, my grandparents, them. I'm so, I was so good around and I look forward to, I looked forward to seeing them. They were, they were fun. They were warm. They were, they were welcoming. It was like every, it was like perfect. They were, they were just awesome. Um, Mm -hmm. But, and like, 
but my dad's my dad's dad died before I was born, but my dad's oh. mom I knew up until the age of 10 and that's when she died and I never liked being around her. She mm. always gave me this weird vibe. Like this like the best way I can describe like the vibes of both of my grandmothers is that my mom, my maternal grandmother, this is her vibe. Hello darling. And uh. this and and this is and this is my dad's mom, my paternal grandfather. Come here. Give me a kiss. <laughs> I mean, it was just, it was just, I didn't, I didn't like being around her. Yeah. It was just, it, it just gave me a weird vibe. And then like everyone, and she lived in a gated community full of other old Jews. And I Classic. didn't, and they were all, they were all very grabby. They were all, and they all seemed obsessed with me because I was one of like, I was the youngest person in the room and they just all seemed to gravitate towards. And I didn't like that. I was like, what do you want from me? Get away. Mm -hmm. I was like, get away. Why are you so why are you coming so close? I ne I always hated it. And I was, and yeah. Yeah, it's hard. I, I don't think younger people should be entrusted to have like the utmost deepest empathy for people who are like just a little weird and hard yeah. to relate to. And uh, it's just one of those little realities about humanity that we all can't be heroes. Uh, yeah. It's also that I think I'm wonder. I might be putting myself onto this person, but I think there might be a thing. Well, of that's like, what this is all about. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's but what this is about. Yeah. There might also be the thing of like, no, you're not allowed to not like these people. Be polite. These are these, right. these these the, we have to be welcoming. We need to be polite. And that's like because I was definitely told that I was told like, no, 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 be polite. Don't say that. That's not that's not appropriate. And so that made me feel shame for having a natural mm -hmm. aversion. And, and what is politeness even except like, uh, you know, I think I was taught the wrong definition of politeness in the sense of like, politeness is just being kind to other people, but not as politeness isn't necessarily like loving everyone right away. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Yeah. And also, I don't want to skip over the one handed piano player. Because <laughs> that that's was, genuinely impressive. That is awesome. That is fucking cool. I, I, I know that. <laughs> When I was in the children's choir, I had an amazing teacher um, at my temple. Her name's Anita Hollander. She's an incredible actress. Uh, shout out to Anita. And she has one leg. But when I joined the choir, I was like eight and I was very confused about it. So I remember like asking her questions and she was so gracious. Forgive me for interrupting, but I thought you were going to say she acted so well. I thought she had two. <laughs> <laughs> she did have a prosthetic leg. And she would sometimes okay. in the middle of rehearsals, like she would take it, she would like kind of take it off and like leave it by the piano. And I always thought mm -hmm. that was really cute. But it just came to the point she had, she was so affable and personable and like unoffended by anything. Like when I, like eight year old me would say things like, I bet you never worry about losing one sock. And she'd be like, you're right. I actually never worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. That's all. Oh, that's so good. Okay, I think that's a good place to end on. That is a good place really to end. Good. But Lucas, we have something to promote. <gasps> Can we you do? believe? Can you believe? What? Oh, I think I think I know what it is. We do it? are doing a live recording. <laughs> We're gonna be able to stare into all of your eyes and look yes. at your beautiful little faces. Indeed, we are doing a, a live version of the podcast May fifth. 7 30 p.m at a wonderful venue if you're not already aware they're uh sort of like a newer i would say a comedy club honestly with the amount of shows that they do and all they're doing the tiny cupboard and they are doing a series of live uh podcasts we are going to be one of them may 5th 7 30 p.m uh you can get the ticket link uh on my instagram gabby's as well and our uh group uh, our podcast Instagram page will be posted there as well. Um, get your tickets. It's going to be a lot of fun. We want to interact with you. Yes, we'll have lis listener submissions, but we'd love to take audience submissions as well. Yes. And we want to see all of you there. If you're in the New York City area, please come through. Yes. And it will still be masks required. Um, yes. Lucas and I are both getting our second vaccines very soon, which is why we feel oh, comfortable yeah. to do this. But of course, that doesn't mean COVID is over just because no. we are COVID over. We, you may be <laughs> over, COVID over COVID in your COVID. hearts, but COVID is not over you. It is a nasty ex that's always trying to get up in your business. COVID is the significant other from the post that won't stop texting. <laughs> so yeah, COVID we're... is Glenn Close in that movie with Michael Douglas where she tries to kill his wife. Did you ever see that movie? I never saw it. No, I never saw it. But I oh, thought yeah. you were going to say COVID is Glenn Close in the sense that it's too close. Oh, 
that's i have no i have no response to that i was just like ooh. <laughs> okay on that note we will end uh stay tuned uh next week where we will have a very 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 special guest um who we're looking forward to having and uh, thank you very much for listening and watching please keep sub uh submitting uh go to our uh link tree uh forward slash meerkats and you will find the submission form please sending us gold nuggets like these we love getting them uh otherwise i am lucas arnold and I'm Gabby Jordan Brown, and <laughs> this is like our intro. And welcome to Two Nose and Your Welcome. <laughs> Goodbye. Peace. <laughs>